this is this and this is where uh, National Guard SF will have a you know a little bit of a um I think advantage. But we had guys, we called it the NQP. You, you now get brought into 20th group and you get assigned to their NQP program, the non-qualified personnel. I think they call gotcha. it something different now. And there are guys in that program that have already gone to selection nice. and didn't make and didn't make it. <laughs> so um they may not know what it takes to make it, but they know what selection's like. So you get to talk to those guys and be like, hey, what'd you do? And they get to kind of give you some you know, some advice or some pointers or some, so you kind of know what you're getting into a selection. Um, the, uh, but because I was national guard, they had just started SOP C. Uh, nice. Do you remember SOP, the SOP C yeah. program? Yeah. It's still a thing. Yeah. Okay. So I went to the SOP C program first and that by far was one of the hardest things I may have ever done in the military. It, you know, this is O2 and, you know, guys were, you know, we had we had some guys from the triple nickel that were just back from their first deployment. They weren't happy about training future Green Berets. <laughs> uh, you know, they're missing war. They were very unhappy and they had seen war. And so they had a very high standard. Yeah. And SOP C sucked. I mean, it was, I mean, you just talk about it was like you're at a hell week. This was, it was like hell two weeks. I mean, they just messed with you for two weeks. And their standards were so high, they they had a lot of same standards as selection would have, um, as far as the ruck distances, land nav, and all that. Um, but their standards were higher than selection, which kills me with almost any pre course. Pre scuba yeah. was was damn near was really harder than pool week and dive school. So if you make these pre pre ranger was harder than phase one. Yeah. So. If you make these pre-courses harder than the regular course, and then you boast, oh, look, we have a 95% success rate. Of course you do. Yeah. Because you, you, it's out. harder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it it drives me up a wall, you know? In fact, how many people that could have made the regular standard did you keep out because you held a higher standard than than pre-course? Yeah. Than, than, than the actual course. Yeah. And this isn't me talking about lowering standards. Yeah. The course itself should... What I'm saying is the course itself should be the highest standard. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. So SOPSI sucked. Um, but the good news about that is once you, if you graduated SOPSI, you're, you're going to go crush selection. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, you're, you know, I was a 23 year old, you know, young, young man that was in the best shape of my life. You know, there wasn't i uh, I'll never forget the, I don't remember selection being insanely hard. Of course it was challenging. But uh, not to jump around, but I'll say the same thing about whether it be CAG selection or SF selection. It's a it's a it's a unknown distance, unknown time selection. So they're both the same in a lot of respects because you have to give a hundred percent at at both selections. I don't know how far the run is. I don't know what the standard is. So I have to give a hundred percent of both. And maybe I crushed SFAS, and maybe I barely squeezed by West Virginia. I don't know, yeah. but to be honest with you, both of them felt a lot alike to me because you're giving a hundred percent of what you have. Yeah. Um, and that's what so, you uh, do. Uh, but the trek sucked. The, <laughs> the, the trek and and we we're we weren't on. I wasn't put on a very smart team, uh, and what incl including me because I didn't solve some of the problems, <laughs> and we dragged. We dragged that telephone pole like it was a plow for five <laughs> miles in the soft sand. And I'll never forget how painful that was. Oh my gosh. Oh, but, uh, but yeah, I, but you know, I, that, that was my process getting, you know, to selection and through selection. Yeah. And like I said, uh, you know, SOP C was, was one of the, if you can get through that, when you get to selection, you're, yeah. you're, you're a machine at that point. I mean, oh, really, yeah. you really are. <laughs> what advice would you have for anybody looking at going to selection like right now as we record this podcast having been to SFAS and also West Virginia I I, I don't know their intention when you know when people ask me you know uh selection questions but generally speaking I didn't ask a lot of guys questions you know I just knew I I'm just kind of one of those guys I'll figure it out for myself and I don't know if some guys are looking for shortcuts or, you know, how to, how to, you know, game the system closer to them. Um, so uh, I don't, 
I don't really see the need, you know, for, for you to go out there, especially in today's day and age for you to go out there and start asking a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. go look it up online, yeah. go be a self-starter. There's so much information out there. Be a quiet professional. Don't go around asking everyone, you know, look at me, I'm going to selection. I know there's two sides of that. Yes. If you know someone who's been there, why wouldn't you ask them? But the answer to passing all selections are simple. Show up in the best shape of your life. Ruck. There's your answers. If you can ruck like a machine and you can score a, a 300 PT test on your worst day, you're, you know, the, it's a, a lot of it. Here's the thing. And, and you'll, you'll understand this. I, I feel like I'm also insanely lucky in my career. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, people with a lot of preparation seem to have a little more luck than other people. And I don't think that's a, a coincidence, but if you think all the things we've done in our career that you didn't, you know, with a 60 pound rucksack in the middle of the night, walking through a draw that you didn't step on something and tear your ACL could happen to anyone. Yeah. You're, you're in phase two doing break contract, the uh, break contact drills with a 90 pound rucksack and that you don't, you know, plant, turn around and blow out your knee. Uh, it's, there's so we had we had guys drop from the Q course for you know taking off their clear lenses because it was fogging up and run into a twig in the middle of the night and and hit their eye. You know, I mean, and it's there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, so you you have to be as healthy as possible, as strong as possible, just to also get through the uh, the 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 luck of it. 